Hi students, it's Mr. Bornheimer and this is your uh, part one of your chapter one test review for chemistry. So one of the main parts of this first test is looking at dimensional analysis. And if you look at the screen here, uh, dimensional analysis is when you're trying to convert something and you, you know you draw your table and you put your conversion factors in to these spots here. Okay, so one of the things that we want, I want to really go through is a couple of examples of conversion problems that I think you might find useful um, when looking at your, for looking ahead to your test. So uh, let's just go through a couple of examples here. First of all, um, when you are converting, you want to make sure that you can uh, convert all kinds of different units. So metric prefixes are going to be important here. Um, some of the prefixes that you should probably know for this test would be like centi, okay? Um, which, so an example of that would be like there are a hundred centimeters in one meter, okay? Um, another uh, prefix you might want to know are centimeters cubed, okay? Now, a centimeter cubed would be like saying a hundred cubed centimeters cubed equals one cubed meter cubed. And if you're familiar with this, uh, that means a hundred cubed is really a million centimeters cubed in every meter cubed. Okay, so you might want to know that. And we'll look at an example problem of this tomorrow. Okay, um, you might also want to know uh, just like for instance, instead of using centimeters, you might also want to know that like a centigram literally means that there are a hundred uh, centigrams in one gram. Okay, so this centi literally means one one hundredth. If I had one centigram, I'd have one one hundredth of a gram. A hundred of them put together gives me one gram. An example of this, um, you can think about it as one centigram is really the same thing as one one hundredth of a gram. And if I add up one one hundred plus one one hundred, so basically adding a centigram plus a centigram, okay, and I keep going, I would need a hundred of them to equal one gram. Okay, so the idea of centi, centimeter, centigram, centiliter, okay, all of that means one one hundred. All right, so you're going to need to know what that means probably for your test. Um, you're also going to need some of the other metric prefixes. You may also need to know what a kilo is, okay? When kilo literally means a thousand, okay? So if I have a kilometer, that's like saying I have 1,000 meters. If I have a kilogram, that's like saying I have 1,000 grams, okay? Now, when looking at conversions, uh, we can use these things to our benefit, okay? So when we're adding or subtracting, um, when we also need to look at significant digits. So let's just go ahead for a moment here and look at a couple of uh, simple conversion factors. Let's say that you have, okay, 1.5 um, meters cubed. And I wanted to convert that to centimeters cubed. Okay. What I could do is I could say, okay, well, I have 1.5 meters cubed. Draw my table. And I know that one meter cubed, based on my, a couple of slides ago here, I know that a meter cubed is equal to a million centimeters cubed. So I can say that, well, that's like the same thing as a million centimeters cubed. Okay. So now I see that my meters cubes cancel, and I'm left with literally, okay, 1.5 million, okay, and you could say even like even say like million centimeters cubed. Now a million is really the same like writing, okay, one five zero 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 that's one point five million you could really represent that as one point five times ten to the sixth centimeters cubed ok 
Okay, so there are some real advantages to being able to convert. And also, you'll notice this is scientific notation. Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at just adding some simple numbers here. For your test, you'll not only have to do conversions, but you're going to have to add, multiply, and look at significant digits. So one of the things that you might want to do is say, okay, let's take 2.1 times 10 to the third, and let's multiply that by 3.56 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay? Now, Remember, if you recall from when we were looking at scientific notation, we can work with our first numbers first. Okay, so let's do that. 2.1 times 3.56. So you take out your calculators, your handy dandy calculating device, and you say, okay, 2.1 times 3.56. Ah, nice. 7.476 times. Now, I have 10 to the third. Okay, I have 10 to the third, and I have 10 to the negative 2. So what I could do here is I could be like, oh, okay, well, I know when I have the, my bases are the same, I can add the exponents when multiplying. So 3 plus a negative 2 is really just 1, so this becomes times 10 to the first. All right, and then that would be my answer. However, I haven't taken into consideration your favorite thing of always, significant figures. Okay, so I need to take that into consideration. When you multiply, you can only keep the number of sig figs as the number with the least sig figs. In that case, it's this one right here. It has two significant figures. So my answer must reflect two significant figures. So I find, okay, the seven is gonna stay, the four, but these seven and the six have to go. The 7 and the 6 are going to cause this 4 to round up to a 5, and my answer is going to be 7.5 times 10 to the first, and that would be the answer. Okay, so not only do we have to worry about scientific notation, we also need to worry about significant figures. So make sure you're reading directions very carefully for the test. All right, another thing that you're going to want to make sure you're doing, let's say we're going to add some digits. So let's add 2.14 centimeters plus 6.374 centimeters. Okay? Well, when we're adding, we can just go ahead and add them right off the bat. We'll just get a number, and then we'll look at sig figs. So your handy-dandy calculating device. You might not even need it for this problem, but 2.14 plus 6.374 equals 8.514. So we're going to write that down. 8.514 centimeters. If you were to keep this, you would get the wrong answer. We haven't analyzed sig figs. So when looking at this problem, we see that the last significant figure in 6.374 is this 4. And it is in the what place? You can take a guess right now. Okay. This is the tens, the hundreds, this is the thousands. It's in the one thousandths place. Okay, and then you have this one over here. The four is the last sig fig, and it is in the hundreds place. Okay, now when you're analyzing the sig figs in addition or subtraction, you have to look at the last sig fig that is in the largest decimal place. And in this case, it's this one. So our number, our final answer, has to stop in the hundredths place. So we look at the answer and we say, okay, tenths, hundredths is where the one is. Okay? So our four is not going to round the one up, so we just drop it off. And the answer is 8.51 centimeters. And that would be the appropriate answer. Okay. Last but not least, let's look at one. Let's look at um, one final conversion here. Let's say that I wanted to convert something like uh, the density of aluminum, 2.7 grams per milliliter, and I wanted to convert that into uh, centimeters. Uh, excuse me, I wanted to convert it into, hmm, I'm trying to think of a useful unit for us. 
kilograms per centimeter cubed. Okay? Now, this isn't a terrible conversion. Okay, the first thing we have to look at is we have to say, okay, we gotta go from grams to kilograms, and we gotta go from milliliters to centimeters cubed, both of which are units of volume. Well, we have to think about how many grams and kilograms, what is the relationship there? So we say, okay, there are, and you should probably know this, there are a thousand grams in one kilogram. And you should probably also know that one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. Okay? So, if we're going to convert this, we start with our 2.7 uh, grams over one milliliter, and we're going to start by converting it. Okay? And here we go. One milliliter is the same thing as one centimeter cubed. Okay, so what we've just done is we've gotten rid of the milliliters and we've converted to centimeters cubed. Now because that's what I want, I'm just gonna go ahead and circle that, just so that I know that I can stop converting it. Okay, but we need to keep going because we are not done. We have grams up here and I want kilograms. So I use my conversion factor and I say, okay, I have a thousand grams equals a kilogram. I have grams in the top, so I'm gonna need to put grams in the bottom. Okay, now I look and I say, okay, well the grams cancel, and I have them left with kilograms, and that's what I want. I want kilograms. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to say, okay, well it's 2.7 times 1 times 1 is 2.7, divided by 1 times 1 times 1,000. So really it's 2.7 divided by 1,000. If you're good, you could just go ahead and move the decimal, or you could take out your handy calculating device, and you can go 2.7 divided by a thousand and you get 0 0.0027 and that would be the answer 0 0.0027 kilograms per centimeter cubed and that would be your answer now this is a quantity that you should be relatively familiar with and that is density uh, density is mass over volume and it's one of those important quantities that we talk about in chemistry. Okay? All right. This ends the test review part one for your unit one test in chemistry. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and email me or any of the other chemistry teachers. I hope that you all do well in the test, and I will see you in class. Talk to you later. This is Mr. Bornheimer signing off.